Welcome to another Law of Leadership in the book of John C. Maxwell in his The 21st Irreputable Laws of Leadership. Today, we shall have the Law of E. F. Hutton. When the real leader speaks, people listen. The eyes have it. Once you learn the Law of E. F. Hutton, you'll never have trouble figuring out who the real leader is in just about any situation. For example, Go to a meeting with a group of people you've never met before and watch them for five minutes. You'll know who the leader is. When somebody asks a question, who do people watch? Who do they wait to hear? The person they look to is the real leader, try it. The next time you're in a meeting, look around you. See if you notice a difference between these two kinds of leaders, positional leaders, real leaders, speak first, speak later. Need the influence of the real leader to get things done, need only their own influence to get things done. Influence only the other positional leader, influence everyone in the room. If you see a disparity between who's leading the meeting and who's leading the people, then the person running the meeting is not the real leader. I have never been the real leader at any job when I started it, other than at the companies I've founded. When I took that first position in Hillam, Indiana, Claude was the leader. In my second church in Ohio, the real leader was a man named Jim. And when I went to Skyline in San Diego, the staff first followed Steve, not me. If you're starting in a new position and you're not the leader, don't let it bother you. The real test of leadership isn't where you start out. It's where you end up. Will the real leader please stand up? Many years ago, there was a game show called To Tell the Truth. Here's how it worked. At the opening of the show, three contestants claimed to be the same person. One of them was telling the truth, the other two were actors. A panel of celebrity judges took turns asking the three people questions, and when time was up, each panelist guessed which person was the real truth teller. Many times, the actors bluffed well enough to fool the panelists and the members of the audience. When it comes to identifying a real leader, that task can be much easier if you remember what you're looking for. Don't listen to the claims of the person professing to be the leader. Instead, watch the reactions of the people around him. The proof of leadership is found in the followers. Think about the reactions certain people get when they speak. When Alan Greenspan speaks before Congress, everybody listens. When he prepares to make a statement on lending rates, the entire financial community stops what it's doing. It's really a lot like the old E.F. Hutton commercials. When Martin Luther King Jr. was alive, he got an incredible amount of respect. No matter where or when he spoke, people, black and white, listened. Today, Billy Graham gets a similar kind of respect because of his unquestionable integrity and lifetime of service. For nearly 50 years, his advice has been heeded by world leaders. Every president of the United States since Harry Truman has sought his leadership and wise counsel. The law of E. F. Hutton reveals itself in just about every kind of situation. I read a story about former NBA player Larry Bird that illustrates it well. During the final seconds of an especially tense game, Boston Celtics coach K. C. Jones called a timeout. As he gathered the players together at courtside, he diagrammed a play, only to have Bird say, get the ball out to me, and get everyone out of my way. Jones responded, I'm the coach, and I'll call the plays. Then he turned to the other players and said, get the ball to Larry, and get out of his way. It just shows that when the real leader speaks, people listen. People become real leaders because of how do the real leaders become the real leaders within groups? As I explained in the chapter on the law of process, leadership doesn't develop in just a day. Neither does a person's recognition as a leader. Over the course of time, seven key areas reveal themselves in leaders' lives that cause them to step forward as leaders. 1. Character, who they are. True leadership always begins with the inner person. That's why someone like Billy Graham is able to draw more and more followers to him as time goes by. People can sense the depth of his character, too. Relationships, who they know, 
you're a leader only if you have followers, and that always requires the development of relationships, the deeper the relationships, the stronger the potential for leadership. Each time I entered a new leadership position, I immediately started building relationships. Build enough of the right kinds of relationships with the right people, and you can become the real leader in an organization. 3. Knowledge, what they know, information is vital to a leader. You need a grasp of the facts, an understanding of the factors involved, and a vision for the future. Knowledge alone won't make someone a leader, but without it, he can't become one. I always spent a lot of time doing homework before I tried to take the lead in an organization. 4. Intuition, what they feel, leadership requires more than just a command of data. It demands an ability to deal with numerous intangibles. 5. Experience, where they have been, the greater the challenges you've faced in the past, the more likely followers are to give you a chance. Experience doesn't guarantee credibility, but it encourages people to give you a chance to prove that you are capable. 6. Past success, what they've done, nothing speaks to followers like a good track record. When I went to my first church, I had no track record. I couldn't point to past successes to help people believe in me. But by the time I went to my second church, I had a few. Every time I extended myself, took a risk, and succeeded, followers had another reason to trust my leadership ability and to listen to what I had to say. 7. Ability, what they can do, the bottom line for followers is what a leader is capable of. Ultimately, that's the reason people will listen to you and acknowledge you as their leader. As soon as they no longer believe you can deliver, they will stop listening. When she spoke, once you have a handle on the law of E. F. Hutton, you understand that people listen to what someone has to say not necessarily because of the truth being communicated in the message, but because of their respect for the speaker. I was reminded of this again recently when I read something about Mother Teresa. When most people think about her, they envision a frail little woman dedicated to serving the poorest of the poor. That she was. But she was also a real leader. Lucinda Varde, who worked with Mother Teresa on the book The Simple Path, described the nun as the quintessential, energetic, entrepreneur, who has perceived a need and done something about it, built an organization against all odds, formulated its constitution, and sent out branches all over the world. The organization Mother Teresa founded and led is called the Missionaries of Charity. While other vocational orders in the Catholic Church declined, hers grew rapidly, reaching more than 4,000 members during her lifetime, not including numerous volunteers. Under her direction, her followers served in 25 countries on five continents. In Calcutta alone, she established a children's home, a center for people with leprosy, a home for people who were dying and destitute, and a home for people with tuberculosis and mentally disabled people. That kind of organizational building can be accomplished only by a true leader. Author and former presidential speechwriter Peggy Noonan wrote about Mother Teresa's speech at the National Prayer Breakfast in 1994. Noonan said, the Washington establishment was there, plus a few thousand born-again Christians, Orthodox Catholics, and Jews. Mother Teresa spoke of God, of love, of families. She said we must love one another and care for one another. There were great purrs of agreement, but as the speech continued, it became more pointed. She spoke of unhappy parents in old people's homes who are hurt because they are forgotten. She asked, are we willing to give until it hurts in order to be with our families, or do we put our own interests first? The baby boomers in the audience began to shift in their seats. And she continued. I feel that the greatest destroyer of peace today is abortion, she said. And told them why, in uncompromising, terms. For about 1.3 seconds there was silence, then applause swept the room. But not everyone clapped, the president and first lady, the vice president and Mrs. Gore, looked like seated statues at Madame Tussauds moving, not a muscle. Mother Teresa didn't stop there either. When she was finished, there was almost no one she hadn't offended. 
If just about any other person in the world had made those statements, people's reactions would have been openly hostile. They would have booed, jeered, or stormed out. But the speaker was Mother Teresa. She was probably the most respected person on the planet at that time. So everyone listened to what she had to say. Even though many of them violently disagreed with it. In fact, every time that Mother Teresa spoke, people listened. Why? She was a real leader, and when the real leader speaks, people listen, so I must ask you this, how do people react when you communicate? When you speak, do people listen, I mean really listen? Or do they wait to hear what someone else has to say before they act? You can find out a lot about your level of leadership if you have the courage to ask and answer that question. That's the power of the law of E. F. Hutton.